You should make Nathan a detention set, and then I'll bring it in because he says it's a shame I didn't give him a detention. You came that close. You should give him one because he says it's a shame. I'm gonna make him clean the classroom a few times, but I'm making do. Oh, no. Exactly. All right, All right. Uh, find your seats. Let's go. I should write a full on essay to uh, the principal about this or all the no schedule. You're not the no doesn't matter anymore, I guess. So, so, so next year. We will be doing upper school assemblies, not combined assemblies. That means, that means it'll just be seven for 12. Oh. So we won't Which have, means we'll be doing no kindergarten, no first grade, second grade. It'll just be upper school. That we will do our own assemblies. Which means we'll be doing a lot more assemblies. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. He's excited. He doesn't have six grades. I'm, I'm not teaching him, so I don't care. When do you win? Uh, just recently. Oh, I, wait, I wait, actually, wait, 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 wait. Is she teaching in grades? Yes. Wait. Oh, what class? Oh, I. Kaden, we can just read again. No. Wait. Who's just reading? You guys, you guys wore me out. The, what are you doing, Matthew? I'm sorry, you're not really good. So wait, is it Mr. Uh, no. No. Is this Ricky the girl that was talking this morning? If you're uh, an algebra one student no, in eighth grade, then yes, but that's not you guys. Oh, all right. So, what are you going to get this week? Okay. Uh, apologize, obviously. I didn't know that was going to take so long. Um, yes. Hand it to Malachi. All right. I don't need, you don't need to apologize. They are here. All right. Day two of seminar. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. Here we go. Everybody, hush. Yeah, I'm gonna get one. Yes. Okay. Hey, we're gonna do something brand new today. We have not done this before. I need your attention. It is on the scale of easy, medium, hard. It's closer to easy than it is to medium. Okay. But if you don't pay attention, it doesn't make much sense. Hey, let's pass that back. I'm sorry. That's for Noah. Here we go. Uh, calendar is in front of you. Josh. Uh, Mr. I only got one. Sorry. Uh, calendars in front of you. Uh, next week we'll finish up chapter 12. I got two days of review because of CMAS issues and whatnot, and I didn't want to. We did a lot of stuff. Plus the fact that half of you've already forgotten how to do a uh, stem and leaf plot. Therefore, we better make sure we have two. Now you focused on box and whiskers. Now we're going to forget that. We're going to move on to something completely different. I mean, completely different. Uh, this uh, chapter is called Statistics and Probability for the remainder 12 8, 12 9, 12 10. We're going to do probability. Okay? Is probability. It, so it's going to be on Wednesday now? That's what I've been told, yes. Or be on Wednesday? Field day. Wednesday. Ow, that hurt. Good. All right, here we go. Got down your homework, one through 18 all. Uh, can you use a calculator for this? The answer is yes, if you'd like. Um, it is up to you. Uh, calculator will not make it quicker, faster, easier. It'll just, the very last step, which is to change a fraction to a percent, yeah, it makes that a bunch easier. Uh, no, you will not be able to use a calculator on the test. 
uh, for any of the probability ones, uh, I will simply accept the fraction as the answer. Therefore, let me talk. Therefore, you will uh, not have to do the very last step that we'll do today. Uh, uh, Histograms is not a seventh grade standard in Colorado. Hey, time out. You do not walk into a classroom with a teacher teaching and take over the classroom and talk to other students and cause a ruckus. Yes? Okay. All right, you got a copy down? Maybe. All right, here we go. Probability of an event. Uh, this is very intuitive. What about our homework? Very intuitive, right? Most people will take to this like a fish to water, like it's no big deal. If you've never done probability before, well, you're going to have to stay with me until you get a, get a hang of things. But once you do, this is very easily done. All right, here we go. Uh, brand new stuff, probability. Put your hand up. Uh, probability or chance. We use this all the time. We talk about what's the chance of something. What's the probability? Have you, have you ever used those words before? Yeah. I like you. Oh, I thought so. Stop. I like you a lot. I want to ask you a question straight out. Flat out. I want you to give me an honest answer. Stop. What do you think the chances are of a guy like you and a girl like me? And you have to get there. Well, it's difficult to say. I mean, you really don't. Hey, just give it to me straight. I came a long way just to see you, Mary. Just at least you can do this level with me. What are my chances? Not good. You mean not good, like one out of a hundred? I'd say more like one out of a hundred. So you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah! That's what we're doing today. We are calculating probability or chance. All right. Probability or chance. Probability or chance. All right. The entire rest of the chapter is about playing games. Literally, every question is about playing the game. Why games? It's easy to calculate probability. So mathematicians, when they introduce this idea of probability or chance, they have you play games and you calculate the probability. Life is full of things that are not games that we do calculate the probability. For instance, we're in a global pandemic. What's the probability that you catch COVID, right? That is a probability. Um, we will be doing nothing but games, right? Games of chance. Games of chance are games that two things are important. First and foremost, it is a fair game. We don't play unfair games. An unfair game is a game where every time you spin the spinner, it always lands on one. Every game that you will play tonight for homework, the chances of it landing on a specific region or drawing a specific card is exactly the same. It doesn't favor the one or the favor the blues or favor the even numbers, every one. Also, don't read anything into these games. Right, seventh graders love to say something like, well, it's right between one and two. No, every game, there's a definitive outcome, right? So a couple definitions in box one, three boxes. The first one is called the outcomes. It is a big fancy word for what happens when you play the game. Pencils, move them. Tonight, it's going to talk about, and the formula that you will use will talk about outcomes. Outcomes are the things that happen when you play the game. The things that can happen when you play the game. If this is the game, a spinner, I know you've seen this before. What are the things that can happen? Go. Well, you can either land on magenta, red, blue, or yellow. However, you have a higher chance of landing on blue. Or the numbers? Six, five, and four. One through eight, right? Those are the things that can happen. You can land on a color or you can land on a number or a combination of both, okay? Those are called the outcomes. 
we would like to calculate the probability of winning something. Hey, you just literally saw in that assembly, somebody won something. To calculate the probability of that occurring, you have to calculate an event. An event is one or more of those outcomes. What's the probability that you land on purple and an even number? There's two events. Events come from the outcome. The event is one or more of the outcomes. Do we write this in each of the seven? Yeah, okay. there's gonna be three of them. Outcomes is everything that could happen. Event could be like one of them. Hey, we calculate the probability of landing on a one or calculate the probability of landing on a blue number. Lastly, what we're going to be doing for the next three classes is calculating probability. Probability is defined as the mathematical likelihood. It's going to be a number of an event occurring. We like to say, what is the chance of getting a one in this particular game? What we're really doing is calculating a probability. It will be a number. What's up? No, we're doing this right now. Everybody got it? No. Yeah. Probability, the mathematical likelihood. You will be calculating a number. Tonight for homework, all the questions, there is a number answered. Good? No. All right. Let's play this game right here. It's called the spinner game. Tonight, uh, most of the questions are on the spinner game. Okay? You will have a spinner. No, you can't lay in between the one and the two. Just imagine it's Wheel of Fortune and the, the ticker thing or whatever, the indicator right there will always point to one number. All right, we will call it a fair game. Like I said, a fair game means that uh, there's no sneakiness going on. Every game you play is going to be a fair game. Uh, we will be writing the probabilities on a, of an event occurring. What's the probability of laying on a one? What's the probability of laying on an even number? What's the probability of laying on a number smaller than five? All of those are really like what you see tonight for homework. It uses a specific notation. Do you see this letter P? It doesn't mean P times parentheses when you're talking about probability. Take a wild guess of what the P stands for. Probability. It means the probability. What's inside the uh, parentheses is the specific event they want you to calculate. So inside the parentheses, there may be words. There may be a sentence. There may be, in this case, numbers. You're like, well, how do I know that it's not, uh, I'm supposed to multiply? Well, you got to read a question. In probability, you, you expect there to be a P and a parentheses and something on the inside. I still haven't talked about how you do the calculation yet. This is just a set, but you got to be comfortable with that notation right there. So guess what that literally says? Um, probability of getting probability of getting one. Probability of spinning this game and landing on a one. Okay. Some of you intuitively already know that answer. Some of you will have to be taught how to do this calculation. Anybody know the answer? 12.5. Okay. What? Uh, okay. Some people, like I said, either have done this or they're like, well, I get the idea immediately. Other people have to be told how this works. Okay. This means the probability of getting a one. This means. Can you get a one and seven at the same time? No. You can't, but you could get a one. Or a seven. Notice it doesn't say a one and a seven. What's the only way of getting a one and a seven? If you spin it twice, twice that's next year. This year, we're not going to spin it twice. Yes. So in box number three. We're not there yet. Okay. All right. Probability of getting a one or a seven. 45%. Probability of yellow. What does that mean? Means yeah. what's the chances of you getting on yellow? That it, when you spin it, the spinner points to a number that, well, there's two numbers, right? Okay. That's what we're doing today. Box two, write this down. This long thing is the formula. Like, oh my word, it's going to be complicated. It only looks complicated because I got to use a bunch of words in the formula. It's two numbers, it's not complicated. The probability of a specific event occurring is. The number of favorable outcomes, I hate mathematicians. Why don't we just say, how many ways are there to win the game? That's what it literally means. Well, isn't there only one way to win the game? Well, it, depend, it depends on what the event is. 
If it's the probability of landing on a yellow, there's two ways of winning that game. Landing on a two or a three, I've won the game. So even though it says the number of favorable outcomes, remember outcomes is what happens when you play the game. Favorable just favorable means I've won the game. Total outcomes is everything that can happen if you play the game. Malachi, how many things can happen when you play this game? There's only four things that happen when I spin the spinner. There's eight. You just intuitively, we know what to do, which is why Caden earlier already told us the probability of landing, whatever it was. He said one out of eight. Didn't you? Was that the one that was one out of eight? Okay. Now, you don't need to write this down, but just remember outcomes are everything that can happen when you play the game. Event is a specific outcome or outcomes. Okay. And then lastly, probability is that number that relates to your chance or your likelihood of winning the game. Tonight for homework, they're gonna say, write the, write the probability. It's gonna be a fraction. We hate fractions, it doesn't mean much. One out of eight, what does that mean? We would much rather write that as a percent. Percent, we, we can wrap our heads around. Two out of 17, what does that even mean? I mean yes. It means, but I'm saying, what does it mean? It means we would much number. rather it to be a percent. Which is why I said we can use our calculators. All right, so quick notes. Probability is a fraction. Nobody likes fractions. So guess what you do with that fraction? You turn it into a decimal. Well, some people like decimals, right? But most people would rather have a percent. So you take your fraction, you turn it to a decimal, move the decimal place twice, and it's now a percent. Hey, you got a 46% chance of, of surviving to a age 100. Okay, I can wrap my head around that. I don't know if I made that completely up. Um, uh, there is a probability right there. We would much rather hear that as in 17 to over 41. What in the world does that even mean? We would rather change it to a decimal and further we'd rather leave it as a percent. As humans, we can wrap our heads around percents. As a decimal, it's always gonna be between zero and one. What's the probability of zero mean? That means it's not gonna it ain't going to happen. What's the probability that when you roll out, you know what a die is, right? Yep. What's, what's the probability you roll a die, you get a seven? Yeah. Well, depending on the dice. One through six is on the die. Uh, one through six so what's the probability of getting a seven? Zero. Not possible, zero. Well, I mean, let's get like what's eight. the probability on a die that you roll a number that's less than seven? One out of six. A hundred percent. That's what the one means. Now, remember, as a decimal, it's either going to be somewhere between zero and one. It's not going to be lower than zero, negative numbers. It's not going to be bigger than one. Zero means it ain't going to happen. One means it literally means it must happen. If you have a probability of one, it means it must happen. Okay. Uh, probabilities are not odds. We're going to do odds uh, tonight, today's Friday. We're going to do odds on Monday. You probably have heard that even in that video I showed you, what are the odds of? Odds are different than probability. They kind of talk about the same idea, general concept, what's the likelihood of something occurring. But odds are not probability. Probability is not odds. They're two different things in statistics. Okay. Probability will always be a decimal number between zero and one. You're like, wait a minute, you told me it was going to be a fraction. Yeah, but if you change that fraction to a decimal, okay? All right, probability of zero means it can't occur. It cannot occur. You can't get a seven when you roll a six-sided die. There's only six numbers, one through six. What's the probability that you roll a number smaller than seven? One, that means it must occur. There's no other option. You have to get a number between one and six. Can't occur, must occur, zero and one. What's up? It's like 0.5, is that like 50%? That's 50%, right? What's the probability that you roll a number smaller than four? 50%. There's one, two, or three, right? All right, the games today, we're going to play three basic games. There's going to be a card game. Tonight for homework, they're going to say a deck of cards, they don't mean 52 cards, even though a deck of cards says 52. They're going to give you a game. I, I forget what the homework says. It's something like, I forget how many cards. It's one through 24. There's a, there's a 24 cards in their deck. 
I don't know why they don't have a deck of cards 52. That just seems confusing. Can, can we go and help them and like buy them a new deck? No. Because that's confusing. The second game we'll be playing tonight for homework is you're rolling a six sided die with the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six on them. Everyone should be familiar with that. Uh, by the way, the plural of die is. Dice. Okay, you got it. Some people are like, I didn't know what it meant. It said die. I got scared. Um, if you roll two, that's that's nice. Okay. Uh, and then spinning the spinner. Those are the three games tonight for homework. All right. We're going to just do a couple examples. We got 10 minutes left of class. It's not too challenging tonight's homework. The hardest thing is converting that fraction to a percent. When I said you could use calculus. All right. So here's my game. It is a fair game. No, it can't land on the black line. It's It lands on a number every time you spin it. Okay. There's my formula for those that need it. It's just two numbers. How many ways to win over everything that can happen? We've already been told how many things can happen when you play this game. How many things can happen? There's only eight. That means every single one. I don't know what the spinner is. Uh, Kate, you got your homework open? Yep. Does the spinner have eight spots or not eight spots? Uh, the spinner has 12. So the spinner tonight has 12. Every single problem, the bottom is going to be 12. Because that's how many things that can happen. On our spinner right here, it's eight. I'm going to give you a question. The probability of getting a one, Jasmine, how many ones are there? So guess how many ways to win that game? Well, there's only one. And we know there's eight things, so it's one over. Yeah, it's that simple. Except that nobody likes one eighth. It doesn't mean, okay, does that mean I'm going to win or lose? Well, we would much rather have that written as a percent. One divided by eight. Move your decimal place to 12.5%. Hey, we're going to win that game or lose that game? Lose. Probably going to lose. We could win, right? 12.5% of the time, that's roughly 13%. 13% of the time, we're going to win, roughly. That doesn't mean literally if I do it 13 times, one's a winner and 12's a loser. That means every time I spin it, I got about a 13% chance of winning the game. I'm going to say that again. That's a pretty important idea in statistics and probability. Even though it says 13%, that doesn't mean if I do it 13 times, one time I win and 12 times I lose. It means that every time you spin it, you have a 13% chance. You can lose 460 times in a row, even though there's a 13% chance of winning. If you play this a billion times, yeah, roughly 13 times out of every 100 you win. I played about a billion times for that to, to happen. What's the probability that you get an even number, Josh? How many ways are there to win that game? Four. How many even numbers are up there? Eight. There are not. One is not even. How many even numbers are there? So what's the bottom number always on this game? So what's the probability that I get an even number? How many ways are there to win? You just told me that was how many things can happen. When we play the game, how many things can happen? I spin the spinner. Can I get 14? So how many things can happen? Eight. Four out of eight. I think you don't need a go. I don't think you need a... Uh, Calculator to figure that one out. Bo, what's the answer? 50%. Please. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd say please, but that's a mathematical thing that we always reduce the fraction. All right. Who's the smart advance? Me. Macy. What does it mean greater than two? What does that mean greater than two? You're greater than two, what does that mean? So how many numbers are bigger than two? Seven, tell me those numbers. So how many is that? Out of five out of five out of eight, well, that's easy. Six out of eight. Where did I get a six from? See how easy you can mess this up? Count correctly. Count. 
numbers that are greater than two. Greater than two, what's the first winner? Greater than two, what's the first winner? Eight is not the first winner if you're greater than two. Three. If you're greater than two, the first number that wins is a three. Three is greater than two. Three. I know, but it's the next. But you've got to count these things. When you're counting, you You don't. When I say count to 10, you don't say 20, 19, 18. You start at one, right? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's six of them out of eight, about 75%. Uh, Bo said, hey, when the book says write the fraction, do we need to reduce the fraction? The answer is yes. So three fours. All right, who's lost? Easy, medium, hard. Where are we at? Easy. It's pretty easy, right? Probability is fun. Uh, for lack of time, I'm going to skip to this one. You guys are going to get purple pretty easy. That's easy. What does this mean, not six? Stop what you're doing. Look at the board. This is a hard one. What does it mean, not six, man? That means everything that is a six. That means that every outcome that is not a six. So which numbers are not six? One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. How many is that? One, two, three, seven, seven, five, seven, eight. Eight. That's seven. Out of eight. eight. All right. See, I have Anyone lost on where I got that? No. Hey, you gonna win this game? No. You gonna win this game? Yeah. Oh yeah, you're, there's a good chance of winning that game. Eighty-eight percent chance of winning that game. Is everyone good on that one? That is usually the one on homework. Kids are like, I don't know what that meant. Not six. It means that you you get something that is not a six. In our game, that's one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. Two or blue? What does that mean? The number two and then all the blue ones, so that's four. Well, number two is yellow. It's not blue. And then the blue ones are four, five, and six. So that's four out of eight. So what's the probability? You gonna win that game? Yeah. Maybe. Doubt no. it. You have a half and half. It's half and half, right? Um. Half and half, fifty percent. Yeah. You can't see the colors. You can't see the colors, which is why you need to look up. It's why I have it nice and large on every single. This doesn't change. Okay. He's the first one to notice that. They're like, wait, how do I do this? You didn't give me a colored piece of paper. Oh, very nice. All right, we're gonna run through the next game. Or any questions on the spinner game? Kane said there's twelve on the spinner in the book. Okay, yeah. It says even or red. both. What does that mean? It says say it again. Even number or red or both. Ooh, you could be even and red at the same time. How many of those numbers are there? That's even and red. No, he's doing this homework. Oh, it's five. Oh, wait, no, on, oh, on the homework, because that has to be. You just count how many are even red, right? Okay. Next game is the rolling of the die or rolling dice. Well, that is uh, really creepy. Rolling one, nobody gets it oh, wrong. Rolling yeah. two, a lot of people get it wrong. Okay, let me talk. Because they don't understand what it means when you roll two dice. Okay? All right. What's the ability if we're rolling one six-sided die that you get a five? Uh, one out of six. Okay. That's pretty simple. There's only one five. Rolling one die, nobody should get it wrong. All right? Are you going to win this game? No. Yes. no. Probably not. No. Wait, why do you put 16.71? Because he rounded it. Yeah, no. What I'm... That's why the approximation Yeah. Uh, when I see, uh, Did you put 17% sure? I, I put 16.6, but then yeah, I, forgot, six, I six, 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 six. Right. All right. The probability of a number less than five, we're back to Macy. Probability of less than five. How many numbers are less than five? Count. Now look at your fingers. How many you got? Hey, hey, it's not, it's not like... Kids make this mistake all the time. I'm trying to tell you how to get this done. Okay, There are four numbers, but there are six things that can happen. That's two-thirds. That's 66%. With, yeah, let's stop. Okay. 
66.7%. Here we come to this knot thing. Usually for seventh graders, this knot causes problems. Keegan, if you're not odd, that means you're you're even. So how many even numbers are there on one die? Three. Out of? Sixty. So what's the percent? It's three out of six. Three over six. So what's the percent? That's like. half so it's 50 percent okay oh all right cool uh are we okay with uh one die because two die is the one that will kick your butt all right everybody look at the board are you paying attention the knot which no one's complaining about usually kicks seventh graders butt. two die kicks everyone's butt paradise okay the issue is the game itself we're not rolling one at a time we're rolling both of them at a time so when it says, what's the probability of getting a five? we got a big problem because there's multiple ways of getting a five. Give me one way if there's two. Here's your first die. Here's your second die. One and four. Okay. Two and three. Okay. Keep talking. Three and two. Four and one. Is there any other way of getting a five? No. Hey, five. you guys got to stop. You move right now, right here. This is what will usually kick people's butt. I got the first die and the second die. Okay? They don't think it through. Five is actually an easy one. Most people get the five. As soon as I make that a six, I run into big problems. How many different things happen? Out of? Twelve. It's not twelve. That's usually mistake number one. Six. It turns out, and we did this before, how many different ways happen when we roll the first die? Six. How many things happen when we roll the second one? So therefore, there are actually 36. You probably want to write that one down. There are 36. 36, I don't buy it. Well, the reason why, check it out. For every single way that you can write one number, you can flip it around. It's six times six different ways. There's 36 different things that happen when you roll two die. So the bottom number for the one with two die is always 36. What? I want to write this out in greater detail. Okay. I can get a uh, one and a one, or I can get a one and a two, or a one and a three, or a one and a four, or a one and a five, or a one and a six. Yes? And I can get a two and a one or a two and a so forth. And then I'm going to have how many of those all the way across? Um, more than three. One, two. All the way until you get to six. All the way until I get to six. And how many are in each column? Six. Six, six times six is 36. Okay. There are 36 different things. To get a five, we just figured out there were four out of 36. You change that to a decimal. Two die will kick people's butt. Okay, probability of getting an eight. What's the first way we can get an eight? Two can you get one with a one? One in one. In. Can you get an eight if one of the dice is a one? No. Can you get an eight if one of them is two? Yes. A two six. and a six. Or a three and a five. And a two. Okay. Can you get it with a three? Yes. yes. Three and a five. Three and a five. Five and five, five and three. three. The four and will kick your butt. Four and a four is the same as four and four. Right? A four and a four is the same as four and four. There's only one way to get a four and a four. That's where both of the, the die are four. We don't flip that one around. We flip all of these around, but we don't flip the four and the four around. It would be the same either way. Okay? Is there any other way of getting an eight? No. So there are out of, no, 36. So there are five out of 36. It's the double number that causes people because they know, oh, I got to flip those things around. But if you flip a four and a four, it's the same exact thing. You don't flip the double around. Okay? Yeah. Is it 27.8? Uh, it is 14%. Okay. We are out of time. You shoot, you shoot, with exception of the card one, which you're going to have to read the one in, in the book to see the, what they give you for cards. Hey, that's your permanent seat.
All right, Jay, you have the uh, pictures of today's homework in front of you on Teams, yes? Yes. Cool. If you have any questions, send me a chat. Yeah, uh, what special do we have now for class? Like, say, say that again. What class do we have after this? Period art two. Music. Yeah, art and music. She doesn't do a Zoom for, for music. I struggle being up front right now. Uh, okay. But you struggle sitting next to all those kids, and that's crazy. You're not paying any attention. Thank you. See you on the week. See you on Monday, Jaden. You too. No, I won't.